Hello tankers and tankettes, welcome to a replay of mine. This is the T-71 and as you can see I'm actually playing in a platoon with a pair of Walker Bulldogs. One driven by Snooze and the other of course by Sircon. I was actually doing a light tank mission um, when this match happened. This is actually a 9.5 replay. But it ended up being nothing to do with the missions whatsoever. It was just a, a kind of a fun little game. And I think it's interesting because when you're looking Tank Inspector, which I've now finally been able to get working again, if you compare the T-71 and the Walker Bulldog, in comparison to the Walker Bulldog, the T-71 is mostly a sea of little red arrows, which means it's worse in a lot of ways. The only thing that you can say it's particularly better at is the autoloader. Now of course you get an autoloading gun with a Walker Bulldog, they actually have very similar uh, firepower in terms of the, the pen and damage, but the Walker Bulldog uh, autoloader is kind of a different beast because it has a lot of shots in the clip but it also has a very long reload with that clip. This is more like the e uh, the 1375, I almost said E75 there, no it's really not like an E75, but um, it's definitely a lot better at doing what the 1375 does than the 1375. That made more sense in my head. But anyway, I what I'm trying to say is I think although there is that sea of red arrows compared to the M41 Walker Bulldog, I still think the T71's not bad. It still has a place on the battlefield. Now this is the one, uh, one of the ones that uh, Wargaming I don't know if it actually happened in 9.6, but they were talking about buffing some of the scouts, uh, in the T-71 included, but not the 1375, for God knows what reason. But um, even prior to the, uh, the whatever buffs have happened or may happen, um, I still think this it has more of a flavour of uh, being an autoloader to it than the Bulldog does. You do sometimes see people using the autoloader in the Bulldog and if you're confident with autoloaders it can have its place. I've actually put up, uh, I did a little while ago, not that long after the Bulldog came out, I put up a, a pair of replays, one with the autoloader and one without, but I suspect if you want a tier 7 American light tank with an autoloader, the T71 is still the better choice just because it's got that much shorter clip reload time. So anyway, this replay isn't, I know I'm talking about them in comparison, but it's not even really about that. Let's just pay more attention to the match at hand. So as you can see, um, I initially, my thought was I was going to go and spot where Circon spotted, and that was because I was on a mission to spot stuff, one of the light tank missions. Circon got there first. Technically, this has the better power to weight ratio, but not by much. It really isn't by much. And because the Walker Bulldog has a better top speed, you don't really notice that minuscule difference in power to weight. So instead, I just decided, right, I I'm just going to try and scout. So I came over to this flank. I had a little look around. And the fact that there doesn't seem to be anything here meant that, okay, I'll just try and... There's a target over there. I'll try and see if I can get some lucky hits in. And although it was a KV-4, and although it was it was a, a reasonably long range for this gun, it still actually worked. And the advantage of this gun is that it fires APCR as its standard ammo, and that means that it has a very fast shell travel speed. And as you can see, I'm not actually packing anything else on this gun. What was happening on the other side of the match... Uh, the other side of the map, rather? Well, we had a couple of tanks on the 890 flank, but... They didn't last very long, and we've come down to the last couple of defensive-positioned uh, tank destroyers. That was a very awkward way of saying that, but tank destroyers in defensive positions. And we may or may not be, you know, we can't really worry about that flank right now. We may or may not be in danger from that flank. But the more immediate concern is the fact that the enemy is 30 seconds away from capping. However, this was a massive stroke of luck. I was able to unload my auto-loading gun into the side of another auto loader, which was, you know, that was a good thing. My initial plan going up here was I was m hoping there was going to be nobody here, that I was going to be able to get up, find enemy artillery and tip the balance that way, because it was looking like the game was against us and things have evened out a bit more now, but the fact that that T-54E1 was spotted up there, probably not by me, has rather put the kibosh on those plans, because that thing could finish me really easily. Now. Our friendlies have made a move into the cap at 
just the right time. Uh, they've taken a bunch of damage in doing it, unfortunately, especially the bat chat. I think he bore the brunt of it, but between the bat chat, the Lorraine, and obviously Circon there and the Walker Bulldog, they've managed to destroy one tank. However, there's still obviously something else here that hasn't hasn't been spotted yet. So I actually use my hit points. I just run in, and there's the RU. This gun, the RU's got no armor at all. So I'm not thinking of just. Uh, of, of, I wasn't going in there to try and clip him, I just wanted to get the reset. However, at this point, I entirely screw things up because, uh, yeah, there's a T-5041, and I know how fast that thing can unload. However, he's just shot three quarters of his clip at me, and I'm incredibly lucky to be alive right now. The, the fact that he has shot three quarters of his clip at me, and he, I think he just went for a reload after that, and it meant that the batch out there could just pop over and shoot him. So it was an unintended consequence of me being shot and very luckily surviving. I, I really panicked there. I kind of drove past, thought, actually, no, he's going to have shots on me. Hastily backed into the building. And in the time it took me to actually get into cover, I took another shot. So, yeah, that was a bit of a screw up on my part. But the law of unintended consequences meant that that ended up hurting the T-54E1 as much as it hurt me. Because while he was probably going for his reloads, he then lost most of his hit points. So, we're down to a kind of a stalemate now. Sokon actually goes over to the other flank to see if we can spot that M103. The Waffle and the T-28 prop seem to have defended things fairly nicely. Uh, we've also still got artillery in the game, but so do the enemy team. So, Sokon just... He, unfortunately, he's about to meet a sticky end. And he's just, he's just trying to get the spot, but I don't know if the M103 saw him coming or if he was spotted by someone else. But the M103 basically turned around and was just able to shoot him. And that superior speed and maneuverability ended up counting for nothing. So this is not particularly good. Now I'm still alive, which is good, but I'm on very low health, so I can't take any risks at all either. Uh, Sircon, if he'd had a bit more health, he maybe could have taken the shot, maybe even finished the M103. Uh, a lone heavy versus uh, a quickly, a quick traversing, quick firing scout. If it's especially if it's an American heavy with weak sides and rear, you know that's easy prey a lot of the time. But uh, Sircon, unfortunately, got a bit unlucky there, and I'm back to trying to spot this T54E1, and I know he's a one shot. And oh, hello, there's in me bat chat. Might get a silhouette? Maybe. I do, but unfortunately the window for firing is so narrow that by the time I fired my shot, he's managed to get forward into cover. So, yeah. Sometimes relying on the silhouette will cost you, but I didn't know for sure that I had a shot up that line until I saw the silhouette. But by the time I saw the silhouette, it was too late. Also, I didn't mean to bash my desk there. Anyway, our bat chat uh, took out their bat chat. The Lorraine's taken out the T-54E1. There's a lot of auto-loading going on in this game. I mean... Everything that's left apart from artillery and the T28 prop is an autoloader. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of an odd coincidence, really. But uh, that T28, uh, T28 prop, no, no, that's because I just said T28 prop. That FV183 is the only thing on the enemy team with any appreciable amount of health left now, and I managed to get in a couple of, of hits. And thanks to that T69, my damage count's now fairly respectable. You know, half of my damage is from that, but even so. Um, the 183 is now taking a bunch of damage, he's backed off, and that leaves the RU in the cap. And I don't know why he tied himself down here. Now this was more calculated. Risky as all hell, but more calculated. What I wanted to do there was either get a shot into the RU and then run away, or maybe even kill him if he missed, but the fact is I was deliberately... And I, I, I know there's a lot of, it's very easy to, to have kind of revisionist history in these, uh, in, in doing this kind of post commentary, but basically my plan was either kill the RU or distract him. And I distracted him sufficiently for the uh, bat chat to go in. And again, this was incredibly risky. I went in, I didn't know the 103 was there. My plan was to get some shots on the, uh, the, the 183, maybe do a little bit more damage, which I did. But again, it was that distraction factor. The 183 started to turn to me, and that was that. But the, uh, the, not the M103, the 183. 
But the M103 being there was unexpected, and the fact that he missed me was very, very lucky indeed. So, yeah, I mean, if there's a point to this replay, and I've kind of struggled to pin a point to this replay. I mean, a lot of the, the commentaries I do, it's like I've got some kind of narrative uh, in mind. I've got some kind of, well, this is what this replay was about. Unfortunately, no kill on the RT, but you can't have it all. But in this game, it was really just, it was a fun little game to play, and I got really lucky at points. And there were some other points where it was more calculated. You know, I was thinking, I you know, I had a deliberate strategy in mind. Um, and, and, you know, I, I do think that it's an underappreciated strategy, particularly uh, for light tanks. There's definitely, with the newer light tanks, there's a concentration of of uh, like the, the meta among the meta players is to play them as kind of like super mediums like you use your your speed and maneuverability and you do a bunch of damage and you rely on that speed and maneuverability to to stay alive but sometimes in a light tank you can if the situation calls for it you can do as much for your team by providing a distraction because there are a lot of times when even though it's not a good idea somebody will incorrectly prioritize you as a light tank. Now you still might be a danger to them, but there might be greater dangers around, but they'll incorrectly prioritize you. They will turn to face you, try and take shots, and if you're in the right kind of light tank, you've got a, a decent chance of dodging those shots. Obviously the map matters as well. But in doing so, especially a lone enemy, in doing so, they expose themselves to your teammates. And if you've got a teammate in a medium or another light tank, or even uh, a fast heavy tank, they can then use that distraction to get in and do the damage or even destroy them. And I've had replays where this was the sole point of the replay before. But, um, yeah, otherwise this game was just a bit derpy. And it ended up being a decent game. But it was a real mixture of, of luck and skill there. I mean, there were some very, very lucky moments indeed. Setting that T69 on fire especially. So, yeah. But the T71, I think it's still got a place. Um, that match was was pretty decent all round. I actually ended up second place on the team. I uh, had a defender medal with 100 defense points, which was nice. I think I was uh, second place for damage as well as score on the team, actually. But we had a bat chat. Um, the, our bat chat did an absolutely stellar job there. Seven kills, uh, 6.7k damage nearly 1400 base xp in a tier 10 is, is pretty good going so although the enemy team had to, certainly some very capable players as well um just it, it was one of those matches where sometimes and it, it does happen sometimes that it it looks like it's going badly and then it just contracts to that core of players and suddenly it's like it's gone so far but the team will contract no further it comes down to this hard core of players that then manage to effectively coordinate enough or just even individually play well enough that then things turn around and that's kind of what happened there so yeah it was a fun little match and eventually someday I will have a T69 of my own but I'm not actively grinding for it I'm not actively grinding for the T57 heavy it's just one of these things that will happen at some point also as somebody noted under my my uh, one of my recent videos that uh yeah, I do tend to waffle a lot at the end of my uh, matches, but the thing is, I tend to save the waffling for the end of the match, and I know I waffle a bit during the matches as well, but if all you're here for is the tank action, then you are absolutely free to stop watching at that point. Nobody's forcing you to watch the rest of it. If you don't want to hear my thoughts and analysis of the, the match that's just gone, then that's fine. You can stop watching. Nobody's making you, um, but... I, I like to think that th th there's some added value. If nothing else, it gives uh, Caption Guy some extra material to work with, I suppose. But uh, yeah, now that's unlikely to change. If it, if it really bothers you, then of course you can unsubscribe. But there's uh, there's absolutely nothing stopping you just uh, just not watching those bits if that's not what you're here for, really. <laughs> so yeah, more waffle about the waffle. It was meta waffle. There you go. So, if you happen to enjoy this replay, you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can subscribe to my channel, and as always, stay tuned for more.